today is rather special <laughs> because I'm going to be working on a data general thing for the first time on stream and this is like the number one reason I wanted to be able to stream. So kind of looking forward to this. Let's get that data general. Uh, before I do that, I am very much going to be <laughs> abiding by ESD precautions this time. So I'm going to touch this, grab it, and then put my ESD strap on actually here. This is lighter than I was afraid of, but those batteries make it very heavy. Um, uh, love 1970s mini computers. Yes. So the thing about this, um, my data generals are actually from 1982. <laughs> they are very late uh, for data generals. I think the eclipses might have even been out by this point. Um, <laughs> So it's kind of funny. Uh, if I remember correctly, both of them started in the mid 70s. So they're properly old, but the parts I have are modern-ish. They're newer, so it's kind of funny. So first things first here, I want to get the power cable disconnected because I want to get some broad shots of it. So this is the AC power cord here. You know what I should do that so you can see me. Uh, this is the AC input power cable. Now, I want to really iterate a point here. Um, I'm, I may even do an actual video about this. These systems take 120 volts in. All right. As I unplug this. Ah, got it. There we go. Look at that monster. <laughs> that's a connector, man. But okay. Now that that's off, I can get the camera in there <sighs> and show you the power requirements. So the input voltage here is 100 or 120 volts at five amps. Now that means that this thing is designed to run at 120 volts, but it also can run at uh, 220 or 230, 240. I do need to check. Oh, this is the other thing. Um, I can't get to them right now. Uh, the 240 requirement that I've been talking about is for the cabinets. The cabinets split the 240 down into 120. I'm pretty sure these are all set up for 120, but I will actually make sure that the transformers are set up for that just to make sure I, you know, don't toast anything. Um, so I should be able to power these off of a 120 outlet. No problem at all. I got so many comments on that video telling me I'm going to be able to find two separately phased outlets and make a one or a 240 cable. I'm, I'm not doing that. <laughs> no. You did the Sandman visit this computer? Oh yeah, there is a lot of dust in here. Um, actually, <laughs> the Micronova has the site inspection letter. This is an official letter from Data General to the company who bought this. All right. And right here, they specify that the environment that it's in has excessive dust. Now, this is very important because uh, if you've seen, oh my gosh, I'm so not going to be able to pronounce his channel's name, uh, Uagi Electric, um, it's uh, another YouTuber who has a Centurion mini computer. Uh, the dust filters in his seem to have been clogged preventing the Bernoulli effect from keeping the head up and having a head crash. So I actually see all of this dust here and I get very concerned that I may be in a similar situation with a head crash. So we'll see, but uh, yeah, these computers are very dusty and even data general themselves knew that the environment these were in was excessively dusty. Next we have uh, these two cables here. Now these are two uh, RS-232 cables, and these are the two different, well, okay, this is the primary kind of cable that the data general stuff seems to use. This is a SIP connector, and actually this is a female connector that has a male header put in, which is kind of hilarious. Um, on the Nova 4X chassis, there is a, like a, a terminal block plate that has multiple of these connected. Um, and I'm guessing that that's what that's made to go into, but they didn't have one, so they just grabbed a plain old header, kind of jammed it in there. I like that they pulled one of the pins to key it, though. That's really, that's a that's a nice move. It's about the only nice move in this whole thing, but uh, these go to two async cards that are up in there. So uh, that's when someone asked me about serial and stuff, uh, 
there is the dasher terminal that goes to these and it plugs into one of these so that's what's going to be used to interface with the computers but for now I can actually unplug these and I think I should so I don't strain the cables right there so I'm gonna get these disconnected oh wow it really does not want to come out though wait a minute oh okay intriguing this is why I kind of want to do this stuff live because this does have a retention mechanism so this pulls open and allows you to remove those connectors pretty cool excellent all right man there's e <laughs> look how much dust there is in the connector ah that one went way better and oh my gosh it's even more disgusting look at that it's, ugh, gross the color temperature on this camera really doesn't do it justice it's so bad oh man well i have the camera down here and lit uh let me show you something else that is mildly concerning uh and why i need to go slow and document everything right here are a couple of wires that were wire wrapped around random pins on here and i'm gonna have to get a good picture of that because i don't know where they are or why they're there um it looks like they might be on the async card so maybe that's a jumper to set an id for async one and two but i don't know how to document that as far as uh you know like a manual that says here's why that's done so i just have to document that it was done and then make sure that it stays done like that so i'm gonna go ahead and take a picture of that right now Am I seeing a second one up there? Yeah, there are two. Two sets of wire wrapped pins. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, okay. Next, I need to remove the batteries, which I've learned were an option. And these are connected, the way that it works actually, over here, if I remember right, there are two pins on this connector that is below where you're looking there are two pins on this connector that go specifically to the uh, batteries over there and those are then fed into card slots one through three down here which are the cpu and memory cards so these are to keep the cpu and memory alive in the event of a power failure um, so that you can turn the system off gracefully without losing any data uh, you obviously <laughs> wouldn't be able to write it to a disc a d floppy disk or a disk platter um, because these would not be powering that so i'm not quite sure what you would do other than try and write out the uh, power loss kind of interesting there but i don't want them <laughs> in there at all if i can not uh, because the main thing <laughs> you want to avoid in vintage electronics now is having old capacitors and batteries I actually just pulled this battery out of my uh ast six packs plus in my compact portable tiny bit of corrosion there at the bottom starting to leak out oh at the top there too left of the uh 58 you can see it's starting to leak out so putting more giant lead batteries in here seems like a uh, bad idea yeah uh, this is actually pretty easy because they're uh, in series, so this wire will always stay. I don't need to remove that. And they are labeled underneath minus and plus, so it's pretty easy to tell black wire to minus, red wire to plus. But I will go ahead and take a picture of that before I pull it apart just because I'm going to do that with every single thing because I don't want to be the person who does something and then doesn't document it. And... Yeah, that looks good. All right, I can pull these now and feel pretty confident about that. And now I can uh, do this. <laughs> Take the batteries away. Uh, okay, we have successfully trimmed this down to just the system and its own internal wiring. So that's, we've made good progress here. Uh, I want to spin this around and get a good picture of the front. You know what I haven't done is put on my ESD strap, but I haven't really touched anything inside yet, so I think I'm good. All right, um, let's look at my first concern about this computer. 
So as I had to pull the front panel off, um, two of these connectors came loose, which is not the worst thing. It's pretty obvious where they go. But uh, I happen to notice that these are kind of green. Um, they're not. It's not showing up well on the GoPro here. Let me try and get this down. Uh, and especially, let's go with this one here. Um, you might be able to see. No, it's really not showing up there. This whole rotary dial looks a little corroded. Let me get the Nikon out. That'll do it. There you go. You can kind of. Uh, the green's not really coming through. There's some green there. That just does not look right to me. Maybe that's not too bad. I don't know what's leaking out of it. I mean, it was probably oiled or had something put in there. Um, try and clean it. Well, you can see it in the wire there for sure. That little tiny blue speck right there. That is uh, that's some kind of battery corrosion. Or not necessarily. I think it's battery corrosion. That's kind of what I'm trying to get to. And then you can see tiny bit right there actually now that i look at it i can kind of see in there if i was going to deoxid this i would do it into that so that's kind of cool um i have the key over here so oh, okay so the whole thing moves so that's that's how that rotates okay that felt pretty smooth though it didn't feel too bad it's really high pressure but i think that might just be how that connector is uh, for the record, it is a key to turn it on. <laughs> Alright, uh, overall this is not as in a bad condition as I was afraid it would be, this switch. Um, so maybe it'll be fine. Uh, I'm hesitant to reconnect these. I'm pretty sure I know where they go, but I will want to see if I have footage or images of that for sure. Actually, you know that blue goo kind of tells me everything I need to know. These go there. And they go... Oh, that's really tight there. Okay. So I'm going to leave those reconnected. And now I'm going to start on a frustratingly difficult task. I'm trying to remove this connector. <laughs> Maybe this will probably go easier outside of the case. Uh, especially now that I can get a really good look and light on it. But uh, I couldn't get that out when I was trying to remove the whole system. <laughs> I would really like to do that. It's just friction fit, so I should be able to pull it off. Oh, man, that's... A little terrifying. Uh, I see something moving. Hopefully good stuff. There we go. That's disconnected. Okay, now I just need to get the earth strap off of there. Um, and then I can get that pulled off. Uh, whoa, the uh, front panel's loose. Yeah, I should have figured that was going to happen. I'm just going to put that right back. Now we can see front panel. Boom. Off. All right, I'm going to put this over with the other parts I've been pulling off. <laughs> For giggles. Ooh, it's a Nova 3. Ooh. <laughs> Definitely not. Nova 3 has a, a big wide connector here that I'm going to have to reverse engineer at some point. Let's see about uh, some stuff. I'm ESD strapping up for sure now because we're getting into the really sensitive things. So, all right, let's 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 get started in here. We have two fuses, uh, a five amp and a three amp. That's interesting because as we saw on the back, it is five amps for 120 volt input and three amps for, or yeah, three amps for 240. So I'm guessing these are for that. Let me go back to this and let's do some more documentation 6.3 the tube i guess that's six millimeter it's like 31 long but i'm gonna guess the standard is 32 because that kind of makes sense right, i'm gonna guess the other one's the same it is okay so i can just dupe that okay i'm very happy with that Oh, I was going to test continuity, make sure they're good. Uh, let's just do that real quick. Beep. Beep. Okay, good. Here. I don't really have a set objective here. I would like to pull out the power supply. I don't know how difficult that's going to be, though. Um, I think I need to start here next, though. BitSavers has some Micronova documentation. 
not full schematics or service manuals or anything, but it has some basic stuff in it. And it looked like they started by removing this section first. So I'm thinking I should do that. Look at how big the hub motors are on these suckers. They are monsters, seriously. Uh, there we go. The hub motors are like the size of my hand. They're insane. Um, how many, I can't see the power rating. I want to pull those off. I wanna know how much power just the fans are gonna draw. Um, they look like they're 120 millimeter. So depending on how much CFM they need, I might be able to replace them with Noctuas and have it quieter. Um, I doubt that I can get away with that though, because the thing is, these feed right into the card cage, so they actually need to be pretty high pressure to get over everything. So I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that. But um, it also kind of doesn't matter. So it's not like I'm actually gonna leave these things running all the time. So it would be fine. Let's let's see if we can get that off. That screw was slightly stripped, but played off and I can now access all the wiring. Okay, there's all that disconnected. Ah, there we go. Oh, that's a big deal thing I gotta do right there. I have to disconnect those two headers to fully pull this off. I really don't like that. <laughs> but it has to be done. So I'm gonna get some ultra clear pictures of that. So there's no ambiguity. Now, you know what? I'm half tempted to label them. <laughs> I think I'm gonna. That's way better, okay. I really like the self-documentation. The rest of the connectors are not just keyed. They're like, they only go one way, so I'm not too worried about removing those. Um, yeah, or by one way, I mean, there's only one place they can physically plug into, so it's not too concerning. Well, that is power supply now disconnected from the card cage. So this could now be removed once I get these screws out. So let's keep working on that. So, all right, uh, we need to pull out these two screws are visible here and there, which will require removing cards. And then there are more of them there and there. So I think I need to remove all of the cards. All right, look at this. Let me hide the uh, thing, but there's all the cards. There's a lot of card for a micro Nova. <laughs> But empty card cage. That's the first time that that has happened. All right, take this thing out. This should just be a piece of metal. And I think, yeah, it'll just slide out now. There we go. Oh, it has connectors too. And good, yeah, grief. Those definitely need cleaned. Oh man. Wow, but there it is. That's a good chunk of Micronova right there. That, that's cool. That is that is some serious stuff to happen. Wow. Fans. They are 115 and a quarter amp. Okay, so half an amp in fans. But yeah, let's go ahead and repopulate the card cage. Well, it's super weird to be able to do this loose now. Um, oh, it makes it so much easier to align. Wow. That's kind of nice. Okay. Um, power supply. Let's get a status update on where we are. So we have all of the cables loose. Yeah, none of those are touching anything. Um, I'm not gonna try and disconnect them. I'm not gonna bother with that because this is tied into all that. And then uh, this is screwed into terminals up here that I cannot remove no matter how much I want because 
there are flat blade terminals underneath this metal plate that I can't access. So I cannot remove the wiring harness uh, from the back. I have to remove it once the power supply is out of the computer. So what that means is I should just pull out the four screws and then we can slide the power supply out and take a look at it. Uh, all right, let's see, that works. Okay. I'm gonna go a little slower with this than the power or the card cage because I know there are cables and I gotta feed those out. Uh, like I need to move over here so I can check where the cables are, how this is catching, and then I need to move back here and just can't do that sitting. So it's just kinda gonna happen. Uh, that's the power supply loose. <laughs> All I have to do is just slide this back, push that forward, and tag some, or snag some cables. Bingo! We just crossed a really major milestone here. This is an empty Micro Nova chassis. There is nothing in there. Look at that, there's some fans and that's it. And then we have another giant cap right there. The main event, the power supply. That's what we really need to look at. Um, I gotta put these four screws back in first uh, before we start on that, cause I don't want to lose those. I can see the stuff now, kind of. I'm probably gonna have to take this wiring off eventually, but I don't wanna do it today. Oh my gosh, <laughs> those caps are enormous. <laughs> Look at three finger wide. Wow. So actually it's more than three fingers wide. It's just the wide angle lens is really not helping. And they go all the way from here to there. Those are legitimately soup can size caps. Those are insane. Wow. I don't like how discolored that bar is. A leaking giant cap is a, a bad giant cap that's got to be replaced. So if one of those is leaking, that's like, uh, that's big money. <laughs> so, yeah. This does not look super easy to get into from here. Um, so there's a plastic top and then there's a card slot. I could pull this card out. Actually, it's just loose. Not even attached. That's weird. It's not screwed down at all. It's just, yeah, there's the card. Okay, that's really weird. I was not expecting that. But any, oh my gosh, this is the shortest, stubbiest fuse I've ever seen. It, you can't see it through the dust. Oh my gosh, look at this thing. That is hilarious. What? A little cute baby fuse. Anyway, I can't atta detach the card um, because these are all wired up to the cap terminals through this down to here. Um, so th this is all a direct run back to those. I will have to document and unscrew every single one of those to pull that card out. That is a thing. Oh, there's labeling. They're labeled by color. Well, that's helpful at least. I am not inclined to go past this point in this stream because we've been running for a long time. And from here, I'm gonna start having loose separate components because um, uh, this is a major crossing point. <laughs> Looking at my hands, I really need to go spend some time cleaning up here. Uh, we have reduced the Micronova to its two main components the cpu card cage and the power supply this is a really big step here um because the components are out and accessible now for the most part that's going to be a bit of an ordeal to deal with uh and everything else is going to be good i think on the next stream i do with these which i don't know when quite is going to be uh, I will probably go through and do a lot more documentation on the computer cards and uh, then open the power supply because one of the things on the computer cards is really hard to see um, from aerial shots that I think I'll need to get specific shots of are these really thin gold wire jumpers. Those I don't know quite what all they're doing um, that might be addressing for the async card like these 
the top two cards are two different async cards. That's not what should be there. Seven, five. Oh, it's a good thing I labeled these. Gotta put them in wrong. I got five and six in the wrong positions. Anyway, I wanted to compare these two because I suspected it'd be different. So three and one and three, no one. Six and eight and eight, no six. So that might be addressing to denote which async card is which to the computer and the stuff I don't have documentation for. So I'm gonna have to go through and I'm gonna look for everything like that on these to see what I need to pay attention to and make sure that like, cause those are really thin. I could bump those and knock them off to make sure that once I go to have this thing all fully set up that I have all that stuff in the same condition that I left it in. All right, I think I, sh I should probably end it here. Uh, all right, let's do this. This is the end proper. Once you, once you see this, there's no going back. Thank you all for hanging out with me for now and uh, I'll see you next time.